Welcome to our Sound for Video session. This is the 1st of November 2016. There was a request from Victor Van Dyck for a demonstration of how to do loudness normalization in Isotope RX-5. So that's what we're working with here. Here is just a short audio clip. Let me just play a few seconds of it for you so you can see where we're starting and then we'll talk about what the purpose is of loudness normalization and how to do it. What is the most indispensable piece of gear for talking head and interview sound? Part of me wants to say sound blankets. Okay, you can see first of all that it's not particularly loud. If you were, say, to publish a video online with the sound in this state right here, the problem is is that a viewer who may have come from another video that was professionally well produced would come to this and go, ah, this is really quiet. They'd have to crank up their volume. Then as soon as they were done, they might play another video and it's suddenly much louder and they'd have to crank their volume back down. So what we're really trying to do is kind of come to a standard level that makes it so that people don't have to go back and forth. And furthermore, what's more important probably in today, and furthermore, what's probably more important today is the ability for your viewers to actually view your content and listen to your content online and on mobile devices. And not only on mobile devices, but on mobile devices in very poor listening environments. So the reality is today that somebody may listen to one of your pieces while they're on a train with their mobile phone, or they might listen to it while they're in a car, or they might do it while they're on an airplane. All of those are really awful listening environments, to be honest. <laughs> but what is important in those cases is a lot of times with mobile phones, for example, the amplifiers aren't that great. They're not super strong. Um, the earbuds or whatever headphones they may happen to be using may not be that great. So if they're on an airplane, they may not actually be able to hear it very well. So what we need to do is loudness normalize it so it makes it much easier for them to listen under those circumstances. So this is what we're going to do. First of all, here in RX-5, um, this is actually the advanced version, um, there are a couple of things we need. Now, one of the things we'll need is a compressor. So let me take a step back and, and kind of explain the overall strategy of what we're trying to do here. You can see here in this dialogue audio clip, we have some what are called transients. Let's see these spikes that kind of stick up a little bit. They kind of stick out. And the thing is, is that we want to actually contain those a little bit, pull those back in a little bit. And then once we've done all that, so that we have all the peaks kind of, kind of in the same ballpark, then we can actually increase the amplitude of the entire clip and it will then sound much louder. The problem is if we don't do the compression first, let's just do this here. If I highlight everything and I say, let's increase the gain by 15 decibels. Watch what happens. Well, it is definitely louder now, but the problem is, is we've created some clipping here. We've exceeded zero dB. And so this is all going to sound distorted and it will sound really awful. So you can't just crank the, the amplitude up um, you have to take care of those amp those transient peaks first. So let's do that first. Now, even before I do that, I have a unique situation here. It's not terribly unique, but it is something I run into from time to time. Certain voices tend to create asymmetric waveforms, and that's what this, these are here. By asymmetric, what I mean is we're still okay. We don't have any... Um, you may have heard of DC offset. That's a problem that happens when your audio does not center around the minus infinity line here in the center. The, actually, the average, or the, the quiet, in quotes, will end up actually centering somewhere above minus infinity or below it. But we don't have DC offset, but what we do have is we happen to have, let's just uh, zoom in a little bit here, and I'm gonna move these over a little bit. You will notice on this particular waveform right here that this peak is hitting somewhere around minus 8.5, on the positive side, but on the negative side, it's hitting about minus 13. So it's asymmetric in that it is has a larger amplitude on the positive side than it does on the negative side. So the first thing I like to do, and the, the problem with that, of course, is that if I apply a compressor to pull these peaks in, I'm gonna be affecting one side of the waveform and not getting the other side as much. And so what that does is essentially it robs me of headroom. That means I have to compress this side a lot harder to get it in line before we can do our normalization and make the overall audio loud. So the first thing I do is I come down here to the channel ops module and within the channel ops module there is this phase tab 
And this has a little checkbox called Adaptive Phase Rotation. And what this does, it actually fixes this asymmetry. Watch what happens when I click Process. Wow. Now, let's say, let's get to zoom in here. This one was asymmetric before, but now we're at about minus 11 and pretty close, maybe about minus 12 here. So they're a lot more symmetric than they were before. So now I have more headroom to work with, which is helpful. Now let me undo that and just illustrate it another way. If I come into the loudness module here, and it scanned through this audio clip, and it says, okay, your peak value is minus 8.6 dB. All right. Now watch what happens if we come in here and let's go ahead and do that phase rotation again. Okay, let's get the loudness again. Now it says my true peak is minus 11. So now suddenly I have almost 3 dB of additional headroom, which is great. <laughs> that means there's less compression I have to do. And the less compression you have to do, the less you're going to affect the sound of your dialogue. My goal here is I'm not really trying to change how the dialogue sounds, which can happen if you compress it really hard. I'm just trying to get us a little bit more headroom so I can normalize it and make it loud and sound really the same except for being a little bit louder. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is the first thing I would do is come into the loudness module here and I can see right now our integrated loudness or LKFS, which is the same as LUFS, loudness units full scales, is at minus 32.8. Now this is a mono dialogue clip. I wanna get this because it's mono up to minus 19 LUFS or LKFS, which are the same thing. And that's sort of a recommendation loudness for distributing your videos on the web. If you do that, if you reach that loudness level, you'll have consistency across your pieces, and you'll also be pretty consistent with most well-produced professional pieces out there. So that's really kind of a good goal to aim for but we need a whole lot more loudness. Right now we're at minus 32. Now, because we have 11 dB of headroom, that's great. We can already go ahead and push this up and make it louder. And in fact, just for the purposes of being able to see our waveform a little bit better, I'm gonna push this up to minus 24 dB. Now, you have to do a little bit of math here. It's not hard math, <laughs> it's pretty simple. But what we do is, there are a couple things. Number one, I wanna get the overall loudness to minus 19, but in addition to that, I like to leave a true peak headroom of minus 1.5 dB. Now, the reason I do that is that while I'm editing my audio clip here and I'm getting it, making it loud, there is one more step after this when I export my final video where that peak can change again. When you actually compress an audio file from, say, for example, here, a WAV file into a video file that you're going to export onto or you know publish on the web, the WAV file actually gets converted into a lossy format, generally these days, AAC, which actually can rob you of a little bit of headroom. So if you can leave a true peak margin of about minus 1.5 dB, or at least minus 1 dB of true peak margin, then you won't have that any sort of clipping issues that occur when you export that video and this WAV audio gets converted to AAC. So. What I like to do is I need to have enough headroom for that 1.5 decibels uh, true peak limit, plus um, I want to get this up to minus 19. So what that means is right now, I could actually increase this by, if we say here 11, let's just say 11 dB minus 1.5, that takes us to 9.5. So I can increase this by 9.5 dB. If I do that, that'll take me to, let's see, 32, minus 9.5. If we do the math, that can get us to 20, we can easily get to 24 with a little bit of room left to spare. So let's just say, let's take this to minus 24, go ahead and process, and there we go. We are now at a LUFS of minus 24, and we still have a true peak margin of minus 2.3 dB. So we still have minus 2.3 dB of headroom here, which is good. Now we can work on compressing some of these transient peaks. Now, before I do that, I shouldn't have closed that. <laughs> we need to do a couple things. So because we want to get this to minus 19 LUFS, again, because we have a mono dialog file here, I need 5 dB more of um, loudness. That means I need to, to push the entire waveform up by 5 dB. Plus, on top of that, I want to leave another 1.5 dB for headroom. So that's gonna be six and a half. I need six and a half dB here. So what that means 
is I need to compress it so that the largest peak, the tallest amplitude peak, is no more than minus 6.5, which is right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is pull out a compressor. Now, here is something to keep in mind. Uh, let me just pull up the right, <laughs> the right one that I'm going to use here. I think it's this one. Yes, it is. Okay, so you need a compressor. RX does not come with a compressor. RX is really made for loudness control of your audio and for cleaning up your audio. It's not for compressing your audio. So you do need to have a plugin that can do some compression. Now, don't worry if you don't have one. There is a free one here that I'll leave a link to that's actually pretty good. Um, it's meldaproduction.com. And again, I'll leave a the link to this. There's a free effects bundle and it includes a compressor, which works quite nicely. It's called M Compressor. No cost. Um, so that is one that you can plug in here to RX. I happen to be using one that I like quite a lot. Um, this is also another Isotope product. This is part of their Ozone suite. And uh, this is the compressor that I generally use. Now, we're not going to talk too much about compression, so I'm going to run through this next part pretty quickly without a lot of explanation. We can come back to this at a future point and talk more in depth about compression. But the main idea here is at the top of this window here, I want to compress. I want to set my threshold so that it's maybe right around... Again, I need 6.5 dB of headroom. If I put it here at 10, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape because, actually, I want to back off a little bit. Let's go maybe minus 9. So the idea is anything above the top of this window here will get compressed, and I'm going to compress by three, a ratio of 3 to 1. So every 3 dB above this threshold will get compressed down to 1 dB. So that's going to work pretty well. And the main idea here with choosing your threshold is you don't want to cut down into the body of the audio too much. Because once you start cutting down into the body, you're going to change the sound. It will sound different. Um, and that's okay if you want that effect. And the effect that you'll typically get with dialogue is it will make it sound... Um, a term that I've heard a lot is beefier. <laughs> um, that's great if you want that sound. Typically, you want to keep it sounding pretty natural. So I'm going to go with minus 9 where we're really just affecting some of these peaks here that we need to pull in. So we'll set our threshold to minus 9 dB. Ratio of 3 to 1... Attack is very fast, release 150 millisecond. Softening, I'm not going to talk too much about that. I'm going to play through this while I set um, the second threshold. Now, I'm actually using a multiband compressor. If you're curious about why and how and all that, <laughs> I actually cover this in my online course on post-processing. Um, I can't, can't spend a lot of time on that here, but let's, uh, let me just run through some of this audio and I'm going to set this threshold real quick. I have good news. The president of Vocal Booth to go contacted me and explained that they worked out the issue they were having with their supplier in the blank. Okay, that's good there. So I'm going to click process. Watch what happens to these peaks. Boom, they came down. Let's pull up our loudness again and see how much we did. Well, we now have a true peak uh, headroom of minus 5.3. So we're getting closer, but we're going to need to do another round of compression. So this time, I'm going to bump the peak uh, or the threshold up to minus 8 dB. And what I'm doing here is the first time I compressed with the threshold set to 9, so I did kind of the bulk of the compression there. Now I want to back off because, again, I don't want to affect the, the body of the audio. I just want to take care of these peaks. And if I back off by 1 dB on the threshold, we're just now going to kind of heavily compress the, the absolute transients and, again, not cut into the body too much. So I'll just bump both of these up by 1 dB. Process again. And boom, brought those down. Let's look at our loudness now. We have minus 6.4, so that's going to be close enough for us. <laughs> we can work with that kind of margin. It's not perfectly minus 6.5, but close enough. Now if I set this uh, integrated loudness to minus 19, again, that's our target. We're going to leave headroom of minus 1.5 dB, true peak. Let's process it and see what it looks like. Okay. Looking pretty good. It looks like it might have limited these peaks just a little bit, but let's listen through really quickly and see how it sounds. We didn't do anything too extreme. We still have plenty of dynamic range here. Let's listen and hear what it sounds like. What is the most indispensable piece of gear for talking head and interview sound? Part of me wants to say sound blankets. There we go. Much louder, much more present. Now, there are obviously a lot of other things I'd want to do here. I have these breaths here that I'd probably want to manage a little bit. And uh, again, we cover that in the course. Um, and we can cover that another time in a help session. But those that's the main idea of how I do this in Isotope. At this point, 
Um, I had actually round trip from audition. I'd send it back to audition and then I would integrate it into the rest of my overall piece. So that's the main idea of how to do loudness normalization using Isotope RX-5, in this case, RX-5 Advanced. Now, RX is a pretty expensive piece of software. Um, in fact, let me just pull up their webpage to show you something. All right, here at the Isotope website, you'll see that they have actually, it is, again, the 1st of November through the 14th of November, I believe it is. Whoops, it just moved here in their carousel. They have a special on their audio repair software, which includes RX-5. Now, when you see these prices, don't freak out. <laughs> um, the, the Probably the most important ones to look at here are, here's RX-5 Audio Editor. It's normally $350 US. It's now $249 through the, I believe it's the 14th. Yes, the 14th of November. Um, RX-5 Advanced, which is what I'm using here. The reason I bought it is because I use it quite often. I actually do professional work processing audio. So for me, it makes sense to spend that kind of money. And I, re, you know, recoup that pretty quickly over a few jobs. So that made sense for me. And that's normally $1,200 US. It's now $750. And then if you just need the plug-in pack, which includes just a few things, it doesn't include everything we showed here today, but um, that's normally $129 US. It's running now for $69 US. So there's an overview again of RX-5 and how I would normally do loudness normalization. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below in the video on YouTube, or you can email me directly if you're a member of the school. would love to hear from you, and it's free to join the school. You don't have to pay anything. Just go ahead and sign up at school.learnlightandsound.com. And with that, we will talk to you again next week. Take care.